Hey Tech Tuesdayers, it's Rick Yuzi. I'm here today to talk about 1G through 4G. Stand by. Hey, welcome to Tech Tuesday. Uh, again, this is Rick Yuzi from Zcorum, and today I'm going to be talking about uh, the evolution of digital or cell phones, actually, the cell phone network and cell phones in general uh, from analog to digital and further. So we're going to talk talking today about 1G to 4G, and then next week I'm going to delve a little bit into 5G and what that is. A lot of people know 3G, 4G. Some folks who haven't been around as long as I have may not remember 1G, and it wasn't even called 1G at the time. So we're going to talk a little bit about that stuff today. So uh, let's go ahead and get started with that. Um, so, so 1G, what exactly is it? Well, let's go back a slide there. So what exactly is uh, 1G? Well, the G doesn't stand for gigabits or anything like that. Um, it's not bandwidth. It is generation. So 1G was considered the first generation of, of cell phone technology. Uh, it's, it was kind of like World War I. Um, we didn't call World War I World War I at the time because we didn't have the Second World War. It was called the war to end all wars, but obviously that was not the case. And thankfully, 1G was not the G to end all Gs because um, while it was really cool at the time, it was, uh, it was pretty basic, as we'll see here. So 1G started out in the early 80s or so, uh, first generation again. It was analog, not digital, which means it was prone to interference, and it was also not secure. So somebody could have a scanner, and uh, if you were nearby, they could pick up your cell phone calls and listen to your cell phone calls, so that was not cool. Um, and as you might imagine, one of, the first, um, one of the first applications would have been cell, uh, mobile phones, excuse me, mobile phones uh, in the car. So I actually had one of these little babies, and it was kind of cool. It's not like I was James Bond or anything. I had a company car, but uh, I had one of these as well. And that's because the phones were so big, uh, you couldn't really carry them around unless you had them in the bag. And then uh, that wasn't very convenient. And then uh, this way you could have the phone. Most of the phone could be in the trunk, and then you'd wire it up to the, to the dash uh, somewhere where you could pick up the phone. And again, it looked very cool. It would be on the phone in the car. So that was, that was how things were kind of in the early days. Uh, first was that. Um, and then Motorola came out with something that was uh, really pretty cool. This guy right here, uh, this is Martin Cooper, and he developed uh, this first phone, and it was called a Dynatac 8000X. And this first mobile phone, as you can see, was pretty big, and uh, he invented it in like 1973. And it was kind of cool. So in 73, he did a, um, he had a prototype out, and he did a little demonstration for some media. And they went ahead and they put an antenna up on the top of the building and they connected it to AT&T's uh, phone network. And then he was down on the street with his mobile phone and the first call he made was to his rival at AT&T telling him that, hey, I'm talking to you on a mobile phone. So that was 1973. And it uh, finally came out in 1983, so like a, like a year later. Uh, and you can see here from the uh, kind of popular culture we have Gordon Gecko from Wall Street who is holding his... Dynatac phone. Um, the phone, I think at this time, you, you had to work on Wall Street and be very successful because it was like $4,000 to have this phone. So it was very expensive. Uh, weighed almost two pounds. I think the battery life at, when it first came out was like 30 minutes, which was good because it was heavy. <laughs> you couldn't hold it that long. Couldn't put it in your pocket. But uh, it was very cool at the time. And uh, again, this was uh, something that was uh, fairly new. So everybody was very excited about this. Uh, it didn't take long for uh, 2G to come out. Uh, that was like the, let's see, 2G's, 2G came out, I think, in the 90s. Let me look at my notes here. Yeah, came out in the 90s. Um, and the difference was here that 2G was digital. So you had digital phone calls now, much more secure. Um, the fact that it was 2G and it was digital allowed you to have uh, smaller phones because batteries, battery life was better. And of course, as technology got better, the phones got smaller, so that was all a good thing. Um, so uh, this was Motorola's next innovation. It was a the first flip phone, and you can see it's a lot smaller now that you could, you know, you could kind of carry this thing in your purse. If you were a girl, if you're a guy, I guess you kind of uh, just have to manhandle it. It was still pretty big, but um, you know, this I, something very similar here. Julia Roberts 
in the movie uh, My Best Friend's Wedding in that final scene, she pulls this phone or something very similar, if it's not it, out of her purse. Now her co-star, Everett Rupert, had something slightly bit smaller. So at this point, they did have smaller phones. But again, this Motorola phone uh, was something kind of innovative at the time. And the, the phones kept getting smaller, which was pretty awesome. Um, we have the X-Files, right? So if you ever were watching the X-Files, it was amazing at this time. You know, as more and more people were carrying phones and more and more people were watching shows like the X-Files, everybody wanted these phones. And it, it seems like on the X-Files, they always had a phone in their hand. They were always talking to each other. They're probably talking to each other right here. I don't know. He's got, he's holding a gun on somebody while he's on his phone and she's holding her phone and can't see the whole thing here, but there's somebody behind her holding a knife to her. So um, they were in trouble a lot and on the phone a lot talking to each other. In fact, um, the phones were so prevalent in the X-Files that in the, uh, in the dolls that they made the, for the show, you know, with Scully and Mulder, they had the the phone in addition to the gun. So, and their hands were shaped to hold these things. So obviously, uh, X-Files and cell phones were something that everybody associated with each other. Uh, one of the things with 2G was, because it was digital, you could do texting. So that was kind of cool. Of course, that ruined our driving and it ruined the English language because suddenly people were texting stuff that wasn't quite English. So I'm still not, I'm still not over that because being in marketing, I, I like to use proper English, but, um, and that was, oh my gosh, remember those, remember those <laughs> keypads? It was awful. You had to text with um, the numbers and you had to push the number, a certain, uh, the number a certain number of times in order to get certain letters to come up. And that's one reason I think people shortcutted it was it was just awful. What a nightmare to text on these phones. But that was something uh, that was new with 2G. And then 2.5G came out. We didn't call it that at the time, but um, that was a development uh, that allowed us to have uh, some simple web browsing uh, on the internet. It was um, there was not really any new cellular technology required for this. It just came out where we can have some web browsing, and because of that, you had some new devices come out. Um, the in addition to that, the fact that you could do web browsing, they had uh, MMS. The original texting was SMS, simple messaging, and then they came out with multimedia messaging. So now you could text pictures to people, and they added cameras to cell phones. So that was kind of a cool thing. This was the first uh, camera phone that came out in the United States, the Sanyo. Uh, so that was a new thing. And then something really big happened. Uh, BlackBerry was this company that had been around for a while. They did pagers, and then they started uh, making what were called PDAs, kind of the pre predecessor to the smartphone was a personal digital assistant where you could have your uh, contacts and your calendar. And again, BlackBerry came out, and they were letting people um, put these two things together, pagers and uh, contacts and then some simple email kinds of things. And then in 2002, um, with 2.5G and the fact that you could now do, let's say, email over the cellular network, they came out, they realized that uh, the next thing was going to be combining a phone with all of these PDA kinds of functions. So they came out with their first uh, BlackBerry phone, which was a 5810. And as you can see here, it had this uh, funny looking dongle that you had to put on there. So if you were receiving a call, you had to fumble around for that, find your little earpiece so you could put it in your ear and actually listen to the call. So that was not the best thing, but again, they kind of rushed that out. Um, the next year they came out with the 7210, which was, uh, had a color screen and you didn't have to worry about that earpiece. You could just put it up to your face like you would a phone. Uh, no speaker phone yet, but uh, that was kind of the next innovation from BlackBerry. Um, and then uh, we, you know, advance a few years, BlackBerry had come out with several different models. And they came out with something that started to look kind of familiar as a phone goes. Uh, at first, um, you know, Blackberries were primarily business people that were kind of doing business in some way. In fact, and everybody was on them. Uh, they, in 2006, they actually coined the word Crackberry because people were constantly on their phones sending email. Does that sound familiar? Uh, people are always on their phones now. So they were constantly sending emails on Blackberries. They were called Crackberries, and that was actually the word of the year in the dictionary that year in 2006. And in 2007, Blackberry uh, came out with the curve model here. Again, you can see that it looks kind of familiar. It's starting to get that phone-looking shape. And they were very, very popular. I mean, again, the Crackberry status, they, were, they by far had the, the market on the business side. And this particular model was designed to both bridge the business and the consumer side. So they were starting to get 
want to get people on the consumer side to start carrying these uh, phones around and these personal digital assistants. But then this happened. Uh, this guy by the name of Steve Jobs came out with the iPhone. And it was, a, it was a departure, right? Because, wow, there's no keyboard. What do you do with that? But he basically combined uh, the iPod, the music player iPod, which kind of already had this shape, and then added uh, the phone to it and web browsing, all those other things. And it really started to take off. Now, the BlackBerry didn't go away right away because people were, it was Crackberry. People were addicted to it, right? In fact, in 2009, President Obama, during his transition period, was fighting to keep his BlackBerry. He said they were going to have to pry it out of his hands, and he finally got approval to keep his BlackBerry. So the BlackBerry still had a pretty good market, but uh, the, the iPhone really started to take off and take over during this time. And about that time, uh, 3G came out. Uh, the first iPhone was not a 3G, but 3G came out, and they had an iPhone 3G pretty quickly. Uh, the difference between 3G and 2G was a lot of it had to do with speed. Um, so that was the primary thing with 2G and 3G, and uh, it also you know, improved as people started using more uh, data. Uh, it helped because you know, it could handle more data. One of the things about the iPhone was that it first came out on the AT&T network, and it was exclusive there. And that was a real boon for AT&T because they, they were the only ones that had it. A lot of people started signing up with AT&T. And then AT&T's network started to go downhill because all of the people that were using all of the data because suddenly it wasn't about phone calls anymore. People didn't care about the phone part. They were wanting to surf the web and look at pictures and videos, those kinds of thing, things. And that was, that was overwhelming AT&T's network. So, uh, it, you know, obviously uh, the iPhone became available on other things, but that's what happened at first. But 3G allowed them to expand uh, the uh, amount of data that you could have on these phones. And also around that time, in 2008, the first Android phone came out. So that was the first phone based on the Android operating system. This was the HTC Dream, the first Android phone. And you can see here that it had this slide-out uh, QWERTY keyboard, which, again, was probably a smart move, I guess, at the time for HTC uh, to do that, because you did have all these Crackberry addicts out there that, that needed their physical keyboard. They liked that click sensation. They didn't quite, their thumbs weren't small enough maybe to do the the on-screen texting and whatnot. So that first uh, HTC phone came out. Um, and then, of course, today we've got 4G. So 4G is, again, just faster. So you've, ha you've got your uh, LTE network um, or WiMAX. Those were the two standards that came out for 4G. And all of these, generally, these changes have been uh, backward compatible but not forward compatible. So if you had a 3G phone, you couldn't get on a 4G network, you had to get a 4G phone. If you had a 2G phone, same thing with 3G. Now, if you have a 4G phone today, it'll back down to 3G if needed, and it'll even go to 2G. 2G is still around. 2G and 3G, they got another year in them, they'll, but eventually here the, the cellular networks are going to start turning that stuff off uh, now that we're at 4G. And here you're looking at two models. You've got one of the latest Apple, the Apple iPhone uh, 10, and you've got the Google Pixel 3. So, and again, there's a host now of Android phones out there, all kinds of phones. Uh, this was my first Android phone. It's a Google uh, Nexus One. You can see right there. This was actually a Google-branded phone. Google came out with their own phone because they were kind of upset with what some of the carriers were doing with their Google Android operating system, where they were putting a lot of bloatware kind of stuff on there. So uh, lots of things that they felt people didn't need. It was slowing down the phone. So they came out. But this little beauty, I really liked this phone. It was great at the time. It had a little, this was cool, it had a little uh, trackball. You can move around, a little button to push things. Um, so I think this was like a three and a half inch screen, very similar to the three, three and a half inch, very similar to the first iPhone, three and a half inch screen, right? Uh, so that's what's so funny is this, you know, phones got smaller and smaller. We saw that first big Dynatech phone. It was huge, right? Like a brick. Started to get down to these little small flip phones. And this, you know, this little smartphone right here. And this is what I'm carrying today. This is a, this is a One Plus right here. And you can see the size difference. So it's like phones got smaller, smaller, smaller. Then it started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And there are bigger phones than this. I think this is a six inch, I believe. And they've got seven inch phones, maybe even bigger. For a while there, they were calling them phablets, like PH phablets, because they were a cross between a phone and a tablet. I think they still call them that at certain sizes. So. So that's where we are today um, in the cell phone world. Uh, now, of course, this is also where we are today. 
where you've got uh, people who are you know, together but not together. So you might go in a restaurant and you see a group of people on their phones not really talking to each other. Maybe they're texting each other, I don't know. Or you've got families sitting there and the kids are on their phones, the parents are on their phones, nobody's talking to each other, which is really unfortunate. But that's kind of where we are today. Uh, again, I, I took a picture of these young ladies at the beach, uh, enjoying their time at the beach, but on their smartphones. So they were texting each other maybe, I don't know, or looking, looking at uh, web pages, not sure what they were doing. But again, enjoying their time at the beach. And again, uh, this is where we are today, unfortunately. So it's getting really dangerous out there. Everybody's got a smartphone now. And unfortunately, if you look around you're in the car, you see that almost everybody's on their smartphone. Even with laws now, handheld laws, now people just put them on their dashboard and they're still looking at them. That's very dangerous. So. You take anything away from today, take away the fact that you do not want to text and drive. It's very, very dangerous. Um, even more dangerous is taking a picture of yourself texting and driving, like this person right here. Because not only is it more dangerous, but you're leaving evidence, I guess, for the police officer if you have an accident and then he pulls your phone. So be very careful. Do not text and drive, right? So um, again, next week uh, I am going to be talking about... Um, 5G. And what is 5G? Well, we'll discuss that next week. And it is another leap in the G, so to speak. It's another leap in mobile phone technology. I think in the beginning it's going to have more of an impact on businesses than it will, say, your average consumer. Um, I know cable operators are concerned about it. Our, uh, phone companies are concerned about it as far as any, you know, overtaking wired internet. We'll talk a little bit about that. So again, next week, 5G, and that'll be next Tuesday at 3 o'clock, and I hope to see you then. Take care. Bye-bye.